Okay, review time. Gear review. But before we get to the gear review, let me tell you a story. Not going to take long. Small story. Story begins in the early 2000s. I am living in England. There is a lot of gravel pits that I fished, lots of uh, places that require a bit of walking. So I buy muck boots. And, you know, for years, and I mean years, the muck boots were brilliant. Didn't leak, kept my feet warm, everything was cool. No problems. A few years later, muck boots, they die. You know, they leak after a few years, so I buy some more pairs of muck boots. And again, pretty okay. That takes me up to like, uh, 2015. Right about then, I buy my wife a pair of muck boots. She wears them to this day. Still enjoys them. I buy myself another pair of muck boots. And these last weeks, they split at the seam. Now, the shop I bought them for, out from, bought them from, I'm not going to name the shop I bought them from. Uh... I've never done business with them again, and I never will. But to try and get the money back from this shop for the, the boots that lasted barely, barely 60 days, was an absolute nightmare. It was an absolute joke. And eventually I got the money back from these boots. I then decided that, okay, muck boots, I'll buy uh, something different. Bit of a taste in the mouth, you know, from that their experience. So I go to the, the, the interwebs and I look at different forums and different things. And the American versions of uh, the hunting and fishing boots for like, relatively cold weather, they kind of said that uh, Under Armour, Hogzilla, pretty good. So I buy a pair of them. The reviews on this channel, actually. Again... They looked shiny and perfect and nice, you know. But they were shit. Ultimately, they were shit. Both boots split in different places. And no. Just because I bought them in America, there was absolutely fuck all chance of getting my money back. So I was at a loss. This was making me unhappy. So I then go and buy a pair of uh, cheap thermal boots. These. The Ski Tex Ultralight. Bought these last year. And I'm not sure if this camera is going to pick it up, but there's a seam here. And just below the little, uh, it's meant to be like a little thing, a little lip to take your boot off. One of the boots is split. So that boot's no longer waterproof. I do have a backup pair of thermal waterproof boots. They are. The vas, again, they're fleece lined, but you can't remove the fleece liner. And like all fleece liners and thermal boots, they begin to stink after a while. I can remember when the moon boot, the old original Ski Tex moon boot, came out, and again, I had them for very cold weather. I actually had them along the same time with the muck boot, and well, you know. If you didn't have to walk anywhere, brilliant boots. If you're sitting in a boat, brilliant. If you were sitting on a place where you're fishing right beside your van or on a seat box when I was still match fishing, brilliant. Trying to walk any distance destroys your feet or destroyed my feet. The Ski Tex boot, the good thing about them was you could buy replacement liners. And yeah, you needed to because after a season of wearing them, they smelled like a rotting sheep. Pretty bad. So I thought when I bought those uh, ultralight boots, I thought that, you know, Skitex is a good name, relatively decent make. Should be okay. Maybe I've just got a shit one, but the heel split, and I have problems with it now. Now I'm a size 12 boot. I'm 6 foot 2, I'm about 21 stone, and I'm a size 12 boot. So when I buy wellies, I buy a size 13. 
Can you see where I'm going with this? When I bought the Skatex Ultralight Welly Boot, I asked for a size 13. And I got these. And I thought, they're a bit snug, they're a bit tight. Okay. Maybe the fact that I'm trying to squeeze size 12 boots, size 12 feet, into uh, into them has probably did them bad things. It's probably split them. So that's maybe what's happened. Upon looking at them and doing the calculation between uh, European to regular size, they're like a size 11 and a half, 12. They're not a fucking 13 boot at all. So I've probably did the damage to them myself. I can deal with that. You know, I have big feet. What can you do? You know, big feet. So, I went again to the interwebs and looked for something to wear. And I've seen the grub boots. These are a size 13. They are a relatively tall shin. They are relatively thick they are fleet i'm not sure you'll see in the inside of there but they are lined now the reason i buy a 13 is so i wear a pair of socks i'll actually wear two pairs of socks i'll wear a thick pair of hiking walking skiing socks and a super thin pair of socks a super thin pair of socks goes next to my feet then the hiking socks over them this means that when you're walking and doing any sort of activity and your feet sweat the thin pair of socks takes the sweat away and the thick pair of socks forms like a buffer that fills the rest of the space in the boot. So your foot and the space between your foot and the boot is filled with this thick sock material. It holds the air, eventually it heats up, keeps your feet warm. You know, little things like that there. So this is why if I'm buying a pair of thermal boots or waders, you know, I'd always buy a size above what I need for that precise reason. So... The grub boots, I ordered them from Amazon, you know, so I'm quite happy that they're, you know, from a, like a bona fide retailer. Uh, they come with a whole load of bump. I will attach all the bump from the site in the description in the video below. But tomorrow will be the first day I'll be wearing these boots. The very first day. Now... I don't actually know where I'm going to end up fishing tomorrow, but tomorrow's going to be the day I wear them and test them out and road test them. The box that came in was sturdy enough. The packaging was secure enough, I guess. And the delivery speeds was adequate. You know, living in Northern Ireland, you have to put up with uh, delivery speeds that uh, go from slow to uh, second coming of Christ. But at the minute... Initial, initial thoughts, pretty good. You'll see they have like a, a nice Vibram sole. Vibram is important. It provides support for your feet. Then that light green layer is a foam layer. This, bit, this, this layer here is foam. This is designed to cushion your feet. Then this is the normal rubber boot. Then this is the neoprene shin bit. It has a secure tab at the top so you can pull the boot up onto your foot. And, well, what more can you say? It's a thermal welly boot. Designed for hunting, designed for shooting, designed for fishing. Again, pretty much what it should do is what it says in the tin. So I should be getting a good product. Again, I'll do a longer term review if they're good. They get thumbs up. If they're shit, well, I will tell you guys. You know, I do the, uh, but I'm not sure I should really go into this. I mean, I'm trying to keep this very short. The reason I want thermal boots that provide support on my feet is I have destroyed both knees. I have destroyed the lower lumbar on my back. I have two vertebrae that are herniated, which is, uh, Fucking awesome, you know, to try and live with that there. And because the herniations in the lower vertebrae in my back give me a lot of nerve pain, for some bizarre reason best known to getting folded in half, the nerve pain makes my feet get cold. Now, I've never had that before. I used to play rugby, you know, at quite a high level. No problem with cold feet. 
You have to play in the worst conditions. No problem with cold feet. I have an injury to my spine and cold feet. Wreck knees. More cold feet. And because I was a prop forward and played in the scrum in the rugby, I had uh, broken toes as a regular thing. So that's probably damaged my feet quite a lot. So I have to wear, and when I'm wearing uh, normal boots or normal shoes, I have orthopedic supports that go in in the insoles, which provide the support so I can walk around and my feet aren't, aren't uh, sore. So Vibram boots tend to be what you want if you've got like if you need support on your ankles and your feet so i'm hoping that because they're a vibram sole this should be the job again we will see in a longer uh test longer term testing well uh it starts tomorrow you know when i go out there that'll be the longer term testing price on these bad boys they retail from anywhere up to 100 under under for around about 100 pound to 130 pound Amazon had a sale and I used my uh, Amazon gift cards and Christmas presents that I got and that's what I bought them with it, you know, it's a late Christmas present to myself. So I paid 108, or actually I paid 108 99 that included postage to Northern Ireland from England. Now I've seen them in different, I've seen them on eBay, I've seen them on Amazon, I've seen them in different shops and they're all around about the same sort of price. You're, there's nowhere out there that sells them at a, at a different sort of price. They're all kind of over the £100, below the £135. They go from size midget to normal people. They got with me in the size 13s and 12s. And they don't have to be the uh, the woodland green, the whole camo colour. They don't have to be that. They can be black, they can be green, they can be any sort of normal colour. The only reason I got that is because, well, I quite like the uh, the woodland camo. And I will definitely be looking forward to giving them a go tomorrow. The soles on them, pretty good thread. Should be good on the on the shit ground, and we should be able to uh, walk a bit of distance, not have problems slipping and sliding and landing on one's ass. But like I said, I'll do a longer term review. So these are the boots I'm going to be wearing the rest of the winter, and. I will have a longer term review to tell you guys. Again, trust me, if they're shit, I'm going to tell you they're shit. So, here we have it. Initial thoughts. It's positive. I like the boot. I've tried them on and I've walked around the garden with them and uh, done some things like that with them. They're comfortable. I can wear my two pair of socks. I can do everything. The only thing that I have to use with them is uh, a, something to take the boots off. Oh, yes, random noises when you're bending down is part of having erect. I did it again. Sorry. No random noises that time. Concentrating, you see. Trying not to look like a tit. One of these. This sits in the ground like that there. You step on one side, your boot goes into this bit, and then you pull your boot, your foot out of the boot. This is like something I've had for a long time. I think it was like a fiver off eBay. So, because the boots and you wear the, th the thicker socks, they're going to stick to your feet a little bit. So you're going to need to have something help to take them off. So this is what they're for. That This is what that helper is for. If you're like a flexible sort of human being that can bend over and do all those sort of things, you probably have to pull them off yourself. But I am crippled and fat. So I'm using all the help I need, or all the help I can get, rather. So, let's see what tomorrow brings. And uh, I just have to let you know what I think in the future. Cheers, guys.